With the official release of new game adaptation Borderlands hitting the box office, the perception of the film has been pretty bad. Hitting 10% of Rotten Tomatoes is really rough, but maybe these critics don't get it right. Maybe the Borderlands movie has some redeeming aspects to it. Me and the Mars and crew went opening weekend to check out the movie and we will give you the good, the bad, and answer the question on whether you should go see this movie in our final verdict. Is Borderlands really that bad? Let's jump into it. So let's start off with our good. And I want to make a quick note before we jump in. Each of us have our own experience with Borderlands, whether it was me playing the games. Frank has some experience with understanding the universe and Haki has no experience whatsoever. So he's really, really went into this, just kind of seeing a movie and seeing whether or not it actually landed. So I, when I get my perspective, I'm feeling like the good of this has to be with the feel of Borderlands is there. There is a feeling that this is in the universe of the Borderlands games. This is on Pandora. They did give you the feel of, yeah, you know, this is a, quite a bit of green screen that they had in this place. But the atmosphere, the feel of it, the, the jokes, they all kind of did hit on that Borderlands feel. And, and, and people who have never played the game before, I mean, the, if you went to go see the movie and you're like, wow, this is just cheesy jokes galore, that's kind of what the games were like. I mean, they do poke fun at a lot of things, and they actually had some uh, pretty, like, they had some, like, raunchy jokes, which were, which were pretty funny. Um, I, I think they did miss on some of that, too, with, like, there's no bloodshed at all. There's no, not as much violence as what people really hope for in the, the games. There's a lot more of that. But the feel of this universe is there, right? There's a lot of other things that can go into, but... I feel like that the the overall atmosphere of this movie kind of fit the the quota of a Borderlands movie, even though there were a lot of other things that you could have done to expand upon that. But even just the baseline of the the movie feel and the character feel, um, you know, even the the outfits and the you know the I guess the way that they per, were perceived all kind of feel like a Borderlands movie. And I feel like that's something that you can definitely say is a good. Uh, but hockey, what is one of your good things here? Yeah, I'll have to agree with you. Um, I thought the action scenes and, and the guns that they were using looked pretty good. Uh, so it kind of ties to, to your environment. I thought the environment was pretty good in this movie. Um, I thought some of the characters were, were pretty good. Some of them definitely lacked. Um, but I thought uh, Claptrap, I think was his name, that little robot who was wheeling around, I thought he was pretty good. He was probably my favorite character. Uh, throughout the uh, you know the movie, making funny jokes and stuff like that. But yeah, the environment, the action scenes and i thought the guns were pretty cool that they used angelica what is your good here yeah i think the environment um like i said you know i have i'm not a huge borderlands fan from the games but I have an understanding of the world and i think the environment this kind of sci-fi wasteland um and it's it's cartoonish it's goofy it has you know cringy corny jokes and they did do that uh, for the most part um, to kind of get the environment of Borderlands um, adapting into the movie scene. So I think that part they did well. I also agree that some characters I think weren't too bad versus some other ones I think that we'll probably talk about. But for an environment perspective, because it wasn't following a an exact story, and I know Marsman would probably dive into that, um, from like an, a Borderlands 1 or Borderlands 2 or Borderlands 3. So they really needed to try to get the environment if they're when they're trying to create their own new story or aspects of the Borderlands story. And I think they did a decent enough job with it, with the environment, the cart, you know, the, the guns, the, you know, the attitude of some of the characters. Um, so that part I will give them um, some kudos for. Yeah, I feel like if, uh, if you've ever played a Borderlands game, you can recognize a lot of places that they threw you to. Um, well, at Moxie's Bar or, or, or even some of the different characters that they introduce you to. They're nuggets. Yeah, yeah they're they, nuggets they threw nuggets there. in there to give a callback to the, those gamers. And I feel like that's something that a lot of game adaptations don't think about. Like, they don't really say, hey, we're going to use the games. Like, even Halo Show didn't do that at all. I mean, they, they did throw some nuggets, but they didn't really. They nuggets. They, There's they nuggets, nuggets in there. But they really didn't really care really. much about connecting to the games. Uh, they made it a clear point that we are not trying to connect to the games at all. Even the new Yakuza uh, sh a movie or show they're trying to, to implement is they said, hey, we did not use the games as part of our connection. It's like, you know, you you really want to see movies and directors and writers make that connection because that's what those are the people that are going to go see the movie or watch that show or the gamers first. And, and just then, from a research yeah. aspect, right? Like 
you know, like when you're researching a, a, a basing a movie off a book and stuff, like don't don't you research the characters? Like that's where How about the, you're an actor, that's an where actress. The like is a lot from. of times, if you're if you're a character from a book or from a, another piece of media, you're going to go and read that media just to understand the logic or the mindset of that person. Clearly, you know, people from the Halo show did not play the games. They did not even close to the characters that were there. So you want to see when they do connect it because that makes sense. Like. Me watching the theater, I was like, I recognize that character. I remember this character. I can remember all this stuff. Like it's and they have the, sometimes they have even similar voice actors to the people from the games, with just to bring that connection. But with the good, let's talk about the bad. And there was a lot of bad right in this movie, and and <laughs> there was quite a quite a bit of bad. And you know, I mentioned this in the in the intro, but the uh, met the Rotten Tomato score is is in the less than ten percent. Of uh, now it's at ten. Oh, now, now it's at ten. At, 10. at the time of this recording, it's hitting yeah, ten. Now it's hit finally hit ten. And you know, when you hit a ten percent on Rotten Tomatoes, that is like the ultra level mm-hmm. bad. That is like dumpster fire bad to levels of like Morbius and stuff like that. So when you're getting to less that than level, Morbius, yeah. less than Eternals, mm-hmm. less than Madam Web. Yeah, when you're getting really? that bad. I mean, there's some really issues, uh, real issues here. And and so one of my bad aspects, I felt like there were some characters that were good, but then there are some characters that were horrendous. And, uh, you know, I I, I really forget the name of the actress, uh, but the, the actress that played Lilith, I, I mean, I, what's really frustrating is that I played the games and I'm like, I when I, when I was watching the movie, I was like, man, I don't remember Lilith looking this old. Like, it was kind of just like, and I, granted, Maybe she killed it in the in the audition. I'm not gonna rag on her for being old or anything. Like maybe she killed it in the audition. Great, awesome. But you also kind of want to find characters that are similar to that of the game. So Lilith character looks like a 50 year old in this movie. Um, hold on, he's lost Chris. Oh, there we go. Um, she looks 50 in this movie, but in the game, she's not. So in some of the moments that you get in this in this aspect, and I don't think she necessarily was horrendous, but she also kind of had some really just like cheesy, just like I'm trying to be a badass oh, moment. Painful. And you're just like, yeah. you're, you're, I know this is a movie and all, but like you're not selling me on this part. And I feel like one of the things that they missed on this was that Borderlands was always most known for having these unique characters and each person has like their own stick or their gimmick that makes them different. And I was after we watched the movie, I, w- I literally went back and watched some clips and some trailers from the, all the other Border games, uh, Borderlands games, and they show off all these different abilities and these characters that are different. They have their own things that they're best at. And I'm like, you didn't get that in this movie whatsoever. Like Lilith, she has in the original game, she had these abilities since the beginning she didn't unlock them she didn't gain them she knew she had abilities but she didn't know that she was necessarily connected to these to these ancestral beings like until later on but even then she had these abilities for a while you know tino did it was a good character i think she was close to what she was in the games but you have roland you have all these others that are actually like supposed to have like their own like specialties and they didn't right and i and what bothers me the most is that you have uh you know president atlas right it it, there's not a character in the games right they made him up which is fine and it's okay to make up a character and they tried to mirror him after handsome jack which was a legendary villain from the video games and a part of me says well maybe it might have been better if to give this character more depth to just use handsome jack as the main character of this movie because it's the most synonymous and the character handsome jack and the villain in the game has a lot of depth to them has a lot of things that you could have ran with to make this person unique right At, well, president atlas you don't know their motivations you don't know it's what generic, the hell they, they really care villain. about and the problem with that is is that you're just like so what's the purpose of this you have to get to the vault why what's what are you trying to obtain here power it's like you're just saying generalities and you're expecting people to be like, oh, that's a good that's a good reason. Like, what power are we talking about? An ancestral power. What is that? In the games, they told you straight up they have treasure, they have weapons, you can like they have all these ancestral beings, like all this stuff that they said that could possibly be in the vault. They had no idea, right? And that was the whole mystery behind the vault, right? That was the whole point. So this mixture of some characters being solid, 
while other characters being horrific and there's no consistency of trying to at least explain the actual story there. So there's a whole lot of bad I just mentioned in that statement or these statements. But Hockey, what is a bad that you felt here? Yeah, so I have two, um, and it kind of goes along with what you were saying. But uh, the the one that really kind of stumped me was the the entire plot. Now I didn't play the game at all, but um, you know I was I confused the entire uh, movie. The action scenes kept me in it, you know. Some of the jokes kept me in it, but the entire plot was very confusing, very hard to follow. Um, this is someone who loves video games and and loves most video game adaptations. Uh, but yeah, it, it was, it was pretty weird. And then, um, even at the end, like, I turned to Marsilia and I was like, man, this just ended abruptly. I thought the ending was, was very strange. Uh, it just, just you know, they were kind of doing a, a few cool things and all of a sudden, boom, it ended. Um, and you know, she got her powers or she turned into whatever that flame bird was, but, um, it just ended very weird. The whole plot was kind of hard to follow, but that was probably the, the worst part of it for me. Yeah, there's a whole lot of things that just happen randomly in this movie that you either you have, it kind of felt like there was a famous meme that says like these uh, these actors are doing a part in this action scene and the guy just shoots the bad guy and then it just it just ends with them just showing like words of what actually happens in the end of the movie. It feels like they ran out of money or they ran out of time and they just have to speed through the last part just explain what happens at the yeah. end. That's what it kind of felt like. Um, but let's look at what is your bad here. Yeah, I mean, there is there is a few. Um, pacing is a big one, and I think that kind of bleeds into what you guys said. You had to really fly through things and really shorten down the plot, and they were just trying to take in things from multiple, feels like, Borderlands games and, and clumping it into one and trying to get this to be a story that we're supposed to care about. Um, now, you mentioned, Marsman, the miscasting, I think, of some characters that were, I think, pretty boring. Um, just didn't feel anything with it um and then you know the the thing that really bothered me and, and it probably bleeds into like marvin saying running out of time everything was so convenient there there was all aspects of that movie uh, and, and we see that in movies where you know the, the superhero finds his way out of a bind or or the protagonist finds his way out of a bind but everything was so convenient all the way through this thing um it, it just like you know they they were just getting through these these issues at very minimal cost. It would just fast forward and then be done and be resolved. There has been practically zero build, zero tension um, with this stuff. And then the big plot twist um, at the end is just like, ah, yes. You know, again, I, we've already did a little bit of spoilers here. So um, it's just like, yes, I'm the chosen one. You know, like just it, it was so obvious it was going to happen. And then you're just... They don't even, they don't even present it well. It it, it just, it, it just wasn't a very good plot uh, and a very good story. And everything was just so convenient, which is just, it, it made things uninteresting. It made things uninteresting, and and that's that's a shame um, watching because feels like there's avenues that they could have went, and what they cobbled together. Although the environment was solid, it was not a very enticing story as both an adaptation and just going to watch a movie overall yeah i mean there are parts where it was just like so you're fighting against a, a gang of bloodless merciless Blood, uh, uh guys and they all i have forgot firing, exactly what they're called the, they're firing yeah, bullets the on you uh, on the on on claptrap and on uh trap. and uh then all of a sudden when you gotta fight them they don't have guns anymore like they just they don't have guns. all their guns disappeared One has a flame apparently throw. Yeah, have a flight door and everyone else. Like, they, they used all the bullets. That, they used all the bullets, bullets, all the bullets on that one on the on the robot. So it's just like it, just things like like you said are just like, wow, isn't that convenient? They don't have any guns to fight you now. It's just they have to run towards you, and just overwhelm. That's it. That's all the things they have at this point. And it was just a lot of that. Like they don't like uh, I can go to pl whole plot issues, but um, it, they just like it just really felt like they had to rush through everything unfortunately it's just like the, when the moments they slowed things down even some of the action scenes like when they slowed it down and just made it like an hour of an action scene and it was a good scene like i'm not gonna lie like yeah there are inaccuracies or in, you know things that don't make sense sometimes but like hey, you know yeah. what borderlands is like that like that's fine like yeah. i'm not looking for this to be realistic right but you know when you sped through things, it just got really bad, right? That was the problem. When you sped yeah. through it, it was horrific. But when you slowed it down, it was all right. Like that's like that. That's kind of the 
the consistency I had noticed. And so with that, let's jump into our galactic grade. And, and, you know, when I was looking at the, when we were going to see the movie, you know, we all kind of post a lot of the discussions with us on our Discord and also between each other. And we say, all right, what, what is everyone saying about this movie? And they said, well, this is horrific, right? And I'm like, well, you know what? Critics have a tough time grading gaming media because they don't understand that, yeah, things are wacky. Things are trying to be funny. Things are kind of be stupid sometimes. So they really don't really understand game media to a certain extent. There are those gems that cross that line, whether it's going to be like The Last of Us, which was always a very compelling story on gaming. And people love it because it is compelling no matter what type of story you tell. Right. Or, or things like, you know, uh, Cyber, the, you know, Cyber, uh, punk, the, uh, edge runners, right. Edge that, runners that's like, it's an animation out. and people don't really yeah. expect animations to be that damn good until you watch it. Then you realize, damn, this is really good fallout being that other yeah. example. Like they, people gaming, uh, critics have a tough time understanding gaming media. Right. So I said, all right, maybe let's just go see what this thing is. I don't think it's a 10%. Right, I and I think when you look at the the media or the the fan score, it's roughly around in the forties. Yeah, it's at fifty it's at, now. It's, it, I think it reached fifty at the time. Yeah, of and, and it kind of when I look at that score, it actually makes a whole lot of sense. Right, while looking at that score, and then looking at what the critics said, I don't think it's as bad as what they say, but I, it's definitely not a good movie at all. Right, I think this is probably going to be a, a four and a half for me because I feel like this is something that it's. It when it slows it down, it actually has a solid like showing of gaming atmosphere and the funness of Borderlands. But then at the same time, you're thinking, well, why are you going to try to have a mishmash of all different games together when that doesn't make a coherent story? Each game has its own story. So by you mishmashing everything together, it makes it incoherent. And then you also have, you know, a tough time trying to, you know, explain all this stuff. In a time span that's right. And this is this show wasn't a short movie. It was what, an hour forty minutes or something like that, like close to that, right? It was it was only it was it's almost the same length as the Super yeah. Mario movie, but and that was our no criticism. Longer. Yeah, yeah our criticism was an hour thirty. Yeah, our criticism was of the Mario movie was an hour thirty, and wow, it could have taken a little more time. But even then, it told a standard plot that worked, and that what made the movie so good was the characters. So like you making the characters the best you could make them, even with a cookie cutter plot, like Mario movie is standard as standard could be, it makes it a freaking great movie because the characters are there. So if you took you the time and developed the characters and made them more compelling, then even this cookie cutter plot you made probably would have gotten a better score. So for me, four and a half makes more sense. For our movie reviews, five is like an average. This is below average. Uh, it's not great. There's a lot of issues with it. Could, should I? Should you watch this now, later, or not at all? I mean, all right. I'm debating between watching it later or not at all, in my opinion. I mean, I <laughs> feel like me not watching this movie, I probably would have been like, oh, Borderlands. Oh, it's not great. Oh, all right. I guess I won't watch it. If you're a big fan of Borderlands, you want to see it, your, your gaming media portrayed in live action, yeah. go go see it. and see it. But don't see it now. Go see it later. Wait until it get, gets on streaming services you're already paying for. Don't go to the movies and watch it. There's no point in doing that right now. Um, but if you're not really a fan of Borderlands, never really been a fan, don't watch it all. You're not going to miss sleep missing this movie. It, they do not do a good enough job to really give you a full picture of what Borderlands is about. Um, I play the games. I've I've experienced it before. You're better off playing the, uh, you know, the the second Borderlands game and just getting the full picture of what a really good Borderlands story is. Or Borderlands three, right? Th those are my two favorites. But Borderlands one's really good too. But Go go play the game if you're really looking for that. But hockey, what is your uh, rating, and should we watch this now, later, or not at all? So I think the critics are bugging out a little bit. A you know a point seven or, or a ten out of a hundred is is crazy. Um, I'm with you, man. I I don't think this is a an, a, an average movie, but I do have it um, at a five point two. Uh, there's just a a lot more wrong with the movie than there was. Good. So yeah, like we said, we were pointing out the plot and how uh, you know the pacing just wasn't there the entire time. You had some decent characters and then a bunch of pretty bad characters. So you know the movie just in general wasn't great. I would probably not watch it. Um, but like I said, if you're a big Borderlands fan, you want to see your 
your favorite video game in the movie action or in the movie world, definitely take a look at it and see what you think. But um, yeah, I'm gonna probably not not watch now. Um, definitely wasn't worth the 13 bucks, but we did find a movie theater that served alcohol, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so I think that's probably why I'm above a five because I was a little inebriated uh, during the during the show. So I'm at a five. It, it always helps. That's why I, I found that and I was like, damn, that actually might be needed for this one. Uh, Langelikil, uh, what is your rating, and should we watch this now later or not at all? Yeah, just for context, you know, at the timing of this uh, video, the uh, Rotten Tomatoes have it at a 10%, and audience score is at 50. IMDb had it at a 4.8, but that 10% is lower than Morbius, Eternals, and Madam Web. Is it that awful? No, it's not that awful, but it's bad. Um, and I'm at a 4 out of 10. Um, there's a lot more wrong than right here. Some missed cast of characters. The plot was just not very interesting and rushed. Um, and although they did some good stuff with the environment, the, just the absolute convenience of all the aspects of this movie um, made it just not memorable. And, and for me, I'm not. I'm at a don't watch it all. I'm again. I'm not a huge Borderlands game fan. Uh, I think it's a decent game, but n- nothing special. And so for me, this is not worth watching. If you're a diehard Borderlands guy, I'd watch later. I agree with Mars, man. Um, don't spend the money at the movie theater now if it goes to streaming or you find it out on TV or stuff. You know, you can tune in to see, you know, how they did with some of the characters that you might be beloved. You might be disappointed, but, you know, it might be something worth to tune in. But I am at a don't watch right now, me personally. Yeah, and with that, let's jump into the last question I want to ask you guys. I mean, we've watched quite a bit of different game adaptations on this channel, and I've made several videos about game adaptations and what things you should do or should not do. But I want to give our opinions about do we consider this to be a good adaptation or you know, what are things that we could really improve on when it comes to how they could have handled this movie uh, and maybe it could have done better. And you know, we, we'll try to drift away from plot reveals, but we'll, if we do kind of glimmer a little bit into that, it's not going to be the end of the world for you. But uh, I, I honestly don't necessarily think this is the greatest game adaptation. I think that what they do well is they give you the atmosphere and they actually give you the look of some characters that you can recognize from the games and say, hey, I recognize that. I, re- I recognize this dude. I recognize this person. And it gives you that feel of like, oh, this is a Borderlands movie, right? And I noticed it right from the beginning and I probably, probably all the way through until maybe three quarters in. And then the last quarter of the movie was like horrendous. And so it kind of made me just kind of sour taste in my mouth at the end because it was just like, wow, you spent the first half doing a good job. I don't, Where is this 10% coming from? And then you start feeling like the issues that they had with rushing the movie and the, and the plot lines and everything. And and I feel like what they could have done to make this better, and I said this earlier, you, you should really dive more into the characters and give them a little bit more of like their abilities and, and things like that. Because like I thought that was one of the best things about Borderlands was that each character was different. And each character, even villains, I mean, you know, in the first Borderlands game, it wasn't that the villains weren't really as like as you know amazing they didn't really have the only re- the real reason they had for wanting the vault was they wanted to get access to like weaponry and like use that as their yeah base. but we, again there wasn't an exact knowledge of what was in the vault yeah like right? they, like they didn't know the what was the movie in, it was everyone a, knows what's in the vault yeah no one knows yeah and that's like that was kind of the the trend of every game is that everyone the vault is so mysterious that no one knew what was in it so they kind of made it like a this is what i think's in it this is what i think's in it and this is what i think's in it and it's like at the point of the whole the aspect of it and especially like one of the major last reveals was like the monster that is in the vault which is one of the most important features of the story and in the first Borderlands, and the first yeah. Borderlands, yeah every borderlands game the destroyer is the monster yeah. that all those ancient beings were trying to keep from getting out which is why they all died that's why they locked the vault and hit keys so that no one could unlock the vault right yes the vault has technology the vault has these things from the ancient beings but they also has a destroyer, which is a time-dimensional monster that will devour everything, that would literally destroy the planet if they got out. So that was the whole. And, and in the movie, they showed it for five seconds, like for five. Yeah, it was that seconds. nugget. Hey, there's a Look, nugget. There's a Another monster here. here. Just eats the bad guy and then have fun with that. You know, like that's 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 stupid. Like that's the point. It's like you have that one thing that you could have done to follow up with the games did. 
and you blew it, right? So my my yeah. my and the issue, convenience. Yeah, it's just the, the magic conven convenience. Oh yes, I know that the monster is in there. We'll let him take care of the villain. It, it literally like, just felt like they ow. ran out of money and time, and they just skipped through the last part just to end it. Right, and 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 that was what bothers me the most. Like you wanted, they've shown struggles. Like the character, main characters had struggles the entire movie, but the very end, it felt like they clapped everyone like with no problem whatsoever. Right, and that was kind of an issue. That so, my my opinion is that if you want to make a game adaptation for Borderlands, you should have just stuck with one of the movies and just stayed consistent. Uh, one of the games just stuck one of the with games. it and yeah, just yeah. stayed. They just copied it to the degree. Have your own variants of the characters and stuff. That's fine. But like, just follow that storyline. Like, if especially just do the first Borderlands game. I know the second one was, is better. You could have just done the second one because yeah, Handsome second. Jack is, is a great yeah, villain. I would say second. You could have just done that, and and honestly, you would have made so much money off of it. Borderlands is a is a you have to have a certain taste for Borderlands. Like, you have to like like that type of storyline and stuff. But in this day and age, a wacky, adventure filled, jokes galore. It it comes off as a Marvel movie. Like one of the more recent Marvel movies, that's really what Borderlands is basically like. Like, but Borderlands is supposed to be like that. Like, Bar Marvel movies are not supposed to be like that, while Borderlands is supposed to be like that. But if you're worried about it, Thor: uh, Blood and Thunder is literally what this what they're trying to be. Right? Like, that's 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 the point. So, like, is there a market for that? There technically is a market for it because there's a whole bunch of Marvel movies that follow that those footsteps. Um, but if, you, if your story was more consistent and you just follow along with the game did, then you'd be fine. So, I mean, that's my two cents of it. But, uh, Hockey, do you have anything on this? Because I, I know Angelic Kill has a few th thoughts on, like, what he would want to change here. I mean, I'll just say something quickly. Again, I didn't play Borderlands, so this isn't specific to Borderlands, but we've seen this and we've been talking about this throughout the last few years because so many video games have gotten adaptations to TV or movies, but the ones that are successful capture both the environment and the, you know, the most important characters of that video game, and they put it on the TV screen for us. So we see it with The Last of Us, we see it with Fallout. They got the environment and they got, you know, the characters, they got, uh, you know, the emotion from the characters, mask on or mask off, Mandalorian. We got the emotion from the characters that we know and love, and that is what will give you success bringing a successful video game to TV or movies. So they just got to do that. And we just got to hope, um, you know, our favorite video games get the Last of Us and Fallout treatment and do not get the Halo and now Borderlands treatment. Yeah, I feel you there. And uh, Legelico, what is your uh, feelings about this adaptation? Yeah, that's a very good line. I think that's what the biggest mistake. And this was a, you know, a lesson learned that we've had some really strong adaptations recently, but you'll, you know, you still run into some of these. And I don't think that means like a hey, video game adaptations don't work anymore and stuff. We've seen success stories, but now we're also seeing some failures and Gearbox was involved with this, with this movie, right? So you can see kind of the turmoil between, you know, video game developers, Hollywood, it still runs deep. Um, and, and what they could have done, I think Mars Manion nailed it. They should have limited the scope to one specific game instead of trying to grab components from a bunch of them and to put it into a new plot. I think Borderlands 2 makes a lot of sense. It's, it's not a very complicated plot, um, you know, and, and they have some real memorable characters that some of the Borderland fans, even if there's some variance to it, I think would be more accepting. But Haki uh, nailed it with the characters. You don't have to follow the exact story. We've seen examples of of shows like Fallout not following a, a one video game tale, but they nailed characters. The Last of Us did the characters and the story, and that works. So there's more than one ways to go about it, but if you can nail the characters and environment, you can survive if your story's not exactly the same. And I think they should have done a Borderlands 2, pretty close to that. But if you weren't going to do the stories, you really had to nail the characters, and some of the characters feels like a bad cosplay. Or how about the? And I'll, my my last point here would be, you know, Fallout did their own story within the universe of Fallout, and you could have done the same thing if you did not want to follow any particular Borderlands game. You could have made up your own characters with sprinkles of characters from the games and people would have loved it because they would have said oh i i know that character and you can have them involved in the story but you can make up your own character like you didn't have to use these are all characters from games that you're including which when you do that the caveat is, is like if they're not close to those characters and what they're acting and they're what they are then that's a negative 
But if you make your own characters in the universe, then people are not going to be as judgmental on the universe um, if it's close to what the games are like. And you can now have a little more freedom to make your own thing, right? You didn't have to use Handsome Jack if you didn't want to ruin that character for the for the movie. You could have just made up your own character like you did. But like, yeah, but not generic bad not guy. Generic one. bear guy one. You could have done like a different character. Maybe don't like. You know what I mean, like, just you could do that. Like, that's fine. But yeah, I mean, like overall, I feel like that they just screwed up on that. But what do you think about the Borderlands movie? Did you like it? Did you not? If you did not watch it yet, what are your feelings about this uh, game adaptation? Do you feel like you know they, what would you want to see in them changing these future you know game adaptations what you would like for them to have included to make them good or improve upon let us know what you think in the comments below and if you like this type of content make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel until next time this is marsman signing off game on <laughs>